Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture number 10 on measure and integration. Uh, let us just recall that in the previous lecture, we had started looking at the notion of outer measure. So, let us recall how the outer measure was defined and what are the properties the outer measure has. A given a measure mu on a algebra A of subsets of a set x, the outer measure induced by this measure is a set function defined on the class of all subsets of the set x. So, it is a function defined on the power set of x of course, taking non negative uh, values and it is defined as for a set E in subset of x look at a countable disjoint a count, countable covering of uh, the set E by elements of the algebra A. Now, and look at the size the measure of the set A i. So, that is mu of a i add up the measures of all the sets a i. So, that this union covers. So, that gives you uh, a number which we can think of as approximation um, approximate uh, measure of the set e. So, look at the infimum or all such possible coverings of e. So, mu star of e is the infimum of all summation mu of a i such that union of a i's cover e and we proved the uh, properties of this uh, set function the outer measure namely mu star is monotone it is countably subadditive and on the sets in the algebra mu star is same as a so mu star extends uh, the measure mu but it is only monotone and countably uh, subadditive so let us look at uh, an example um, of this outer measure so, we will uh, in this example, we will start with the, the collection A of all subsets of the real line, which are either finite or their complements are finite. So, recall uh, in the beginning of the lectures, we have shown that this collection A is an algebra of subsets of A. So, this collection A forms an algebra of subsets of the set R. Let us define a set function mu on this mu of the set A is equal to 0 if the set is finite and if the set in the algebra is not finite then we know it is a complement is finite. So, in that case we define mu of A to be equal to 1 if A complement is finite and we have also checked uh, this example for this example that mu is a measure on this algebra A. So, I would strongly say that uh, you try to prove it yourself once again that this mu is a measure that is mu on the algebra A is countably additive. So, let us denote by mu star the outer measure induced by mu on all subsets of the uh, real line. So, mu star is the outer measure given by this particular measure and we want to uh, correct find some properties of this mu r uh, of this uh, outer measure mu and if you recall just now we said outer measure always is monotone and it is countably sub additive. So, these properties are true for any outer measure. So, in particular this outer measure also. We want to do something more and obviously let us note that mu star of x the whole space is same as mu of x and that is equal to 1 because mu star extends. So, and x belongs to the algebra actually x complement is empty set which is finite. So, by definition mu star of x should be equal to mu of x which is equal to 1 and if a is any subset of x and mu star being monotone. So, we know that mu star of a is less than or equal to mu star of x and uh, that is less than or that is equal to 1. So, mu star of every set is going to be between 0 and 1. So, this is a property we have uh, deduced from the general uh, facts that mu is monotone and mu star of the whole space is equal to 1. We want to uh, show that if A is a countable set in real line, 
then mu star of a is equal to 0. So, let us see how do we show that. So, let us take a set a. So, let a contained in R a countable. That means, I can write a as a sequence. So, x 1, x 2 and so on. So, I can write a is actually equal to union of singletons x i, i equal to 1 to n. And by definition, mu of the singleton x i, it is a finite set. So, that is equal to 0 for every i. Thus, mu star of a, which is less than or equal to summation mu of x i's. This is this is one covering and measure of each one of them being equal to 0. So, this is equal to 0. So, mu star of a is less than or equal to 0. We know it is always bigger than or equal to 0. So, that implies that mu star of a equal to 0 if a is countable. So, we have shown that for a countable uh, set subset a in the real line, uh, the outer measure uh, which we defined is going to be 0 whenever a is countable. Let us go further and look at some other properties of uh, this outer measure. We want to show that mu star of a is equal to 1 if and only if a is uncountable. So, let us prove that. So, let a contained in R a uncountable claim mu of mu star of a is equal to 1. Right? So, note mu star of a is less than or equal to 1 that is obvious. Right? That is by the definition we said mu star is monotone which is equal to mu of x anyway mu star of x. So, mu star of a is always less than or equal to 1 to show that mu star of a is also bigger than or equal to 1. Okay. Now, let us note a uncountable. Okay. So, look at a is uncountable. So, what can you say about a complement of the set? Okay. It cannot, um, if a is uncountable, then uh, uh, we want to, uh, if a is sorry, if a is uncountable, let us take a covering of a i, i equal to 1 to infinity. Let let us take a covering where a i s belong to the algebra a. Right? Now, note in this covering a uncountable implies at least one of these a i s at least one a i is uncountable. So, this is uh, the observation which is going to be crucial. A is a subset of unions A i s which are in the algebra okay. and each one of them if A is uncountable then each one of them cannot be countable because if each one of them is countable then countable union of countable sets will be countable. So, A will be countable. So, that means there is at least one A i which is uncountable say A i naught is uncountable, but that will mean what a i naught is uncountable means. So, thus we have got that mu of uh, mu uh, star uh, is a a i naught is uncountable. So, may mu of a i naught okay, what can we say about that. So, uh, that cannot be uh, equal to 0. Can we uh, say that cannot be equal to 0? Let us see. One of the a i is not is uh, uncountable, right. So, that means, uh, 
this is it is not finite okay ah, right so this so this is because a i not belongs to the algebra a that is a crucial thing so that means either a i not is finite or its complement is finite but we know that a i not is uncountable so that means a i not uncountable so that implies that a i not complement is uh, finite because it belongs to the algebra so either a i not has to be finite or its complement has to be finite so this is finite so that implies that mu of a i not by definition is equal to 1 so that's what we have shown so thus a is contained in if a is contained in union a i 1 to infinity then for some i not mu of a i not is equal to 1 so that implies that automatically implies the fact that mu star of a okay the mu star of so any covering will have at least one of the elements so implies this is bigger than or equal to 1 right because mu star of a is the infimum of because mu star of a the summation i equal to 1 to infinity mu of a i is going to be bigger than or equal to 1 right because a i not is 1 at least one of the terms is 1 so for every covering a i of a sigma mu of a i is bigger than or equal to 1 so the infimum has to be bigger than or equal to 1 so hence mu star of a is equal to 1 so we have proved so therefore thus a uncountable implies mu star of a is equal to 1 and the converse is obvious because conversely right conversely if so conversely if mu star of a is equal to 1 then a is Uh, then a is uncountable because for countable sets we have already shown mu star of a is equal to zero so a is uncountable if and only if so we have shown we have characterized all sets for which outer measure is going to be equal to one so we have shown the fact that mu star the outer measure induced by the measure that we are looking at namely mu if mu of a is equal to 0 whenever a is finite and mu of uh, a is equal to 1 when a complement is finite and if we look at the outer measure induced by this measure then that has the property that mu star of every countable set is equal to 0 and mu star of a set is equal to 1 if and only if the set is uncountable so that is the property that we have so mu star of a is equal to 1 if and only if a is uncountable now let us uh, we already know that mu star is going to be uh, is countable is sub additive we want to know is mu star uh, additive right so we will show that is not the case that mu star is not even finitely additive so to show that let us observe that the real line i can decompose into two disjoint sets Minus infinity to zero, zero close, union zero to infinity. So the real line is written as a union of two subsets, and now the outer measure of the set minus infinity to zero, that is a uncountable set, so that is equal to one, and the outer measure of zero to infinity is also equal to one. So outer measure of both of these sets is equal to one. Their union is R. and so we get mu star and mu star of r is equal to 1 so which is strictly less than 2 equal to sum of the outer measures of each one of them so that says mu star of r is strictly less than mu star of minus infinity to 0 plus mu star of 0 to infinity so this should be mu star and this also should be mu star so that says that the sets uh, that mu star the set function mu star is not even finitely additive 
but let us uh, observe uh, uh, some more facts about this outer measure. This outer measure on all subsets is not finitely additive, but it has some uh, nice property. It is countably additive on a subclass. So, let us look at the subclass to be S, which is A subsets of R, all those subsets of R where either A or A complement is countable. So, keep in mind A or A complement is countable. We had shown that this collection forms a sigma algebra and our given algebra A, which was the collection of all sets for which A or A complement is finite obviously, is a subset of this class S of subsets which are A or A complement countable and that is of course, a subset of all subsets. So, algebra A is contained in S, this sigma algebra S and which is inside of P R. And uh, uh, it is actually uh, we have also shown that uh, mu star. So, what is mu star on S? If a set A is countable, then mu star of A is 0. right? If it is not countable, but then it is A complement is countable, right? then mu if A complement is countable, then the set A cannot be countable. It has to be uncountable and for uncountable sets, mu star of A is equal to 1. So, mu star restricted to S is the set function, which is mu star of a set A is 0 if A is countable and mu star of a set A complement A of A is equal to 1 if its complement is countable. So, and that we have already shown is a measure on the class of uh, on all uh, subset all sets in the, the sigma algebra S. So, given that measure in our example given the measure on the algebra A, when we define the outer measure which is defined on all subsets of P R is not even finitely additive, but if we restrict it to the collection of sets S, which is A or A complement countable, then on that class it is a measure and it extends. So, the given measure on the algebra does not extend to all subsets, but at least it extends to a, a collection, a sub collection of all subsets and um, that includes the original algebra. This is uh, a situation uh, which we are going to see is very common in our uh, extension process. So, we are starting with a measure mu on uh, an algebra and just now we said in, an, uh, in, a pro in the process of extension, let us define outer measure on all subsets and here is an example which says to all uh, on all subsets uh, outer measure is not, it may not be even finitely additive, but at least this example says that we can probably find a subclass of all uh, subsets of that set X, which includes the given uh, algebra and on that probably it is countably additive. So, the problem is to look for a collection of subsets uh, on which it is going to be countably additive. Before we go over to that uh, process, uh, let me give you an exercise which uh, all of you should try. Namely, if mu is a measure on an algebra, then we define the outer measure as infimum, look at all coverings and look at summation mu of A i. Right? There was no condition on the put on the sets A i. And the exercise says, if you put take only those coverings of E by elements of the algebra which are pairwise disjoint and then take the infimum over only, only such coverings, that also will give you the outer measure. So, the exercise is that outer measure for a set E can be defined in terms of countable in terms of countable disjoint coverings of E. Namely, take coverings of E by elements of the algebra and the elements of the covering are pairwise disjoint. Look at the sum mu of A i and take the infimum over such covering. So, infimum is taken over all countable disjoint coverings. In the original definition, we did not put this condition and the exercise is both of these uh, are same. And the answer lies uh, in the simple observation that when a measure mu is defined on an algebra and you look at the union of elements in the algebra, any union can also be written as a, a union of uh, uh, pairwise disjoint sets. So, a union of elements of the algebra K 
can be represented in terms of pairwise disjoint sets. That fact we have used earlier also. So, using that you can try to prove this exercise. Here is another exercise which you should uh, try to prove uh, to get familiarized with the, the concept of how to measure. Let us let take x any uh, non empty set, A is an algebra of subsets of a set x and let us fix any element x 0 in x, any arbitrary element. Now, given any subset A okay, in the algebra, either x naught will belong to A or x naught will not belong to A, two, two possibilities. So, if x naught does not belong to A, that particular element that you have fixed does not belong to A, put mu of A, define mu of A to be equal to 0 and define mu of A equal to 1 if x 0 belongs to A. So, whenever x 0 is in A, the measure of that set is 1, otherwise it is equal to 0. Uh, show that this is a countable additive set function, namely it is a, a measure because mu of empty set is automatically 0. So, we would like you to characterize that show that the outer measure, look at the outer measure induced by this measure, show that the outer measure has the property that outer measure of every set is either 0 or 1 again and outer measure of a set is equal to 1 if the element x naught belongs to A, that is a property of mu also. So, we want you to show that mu star of A is equal to 1 if x 0 belongs to A. Uh, can you uh, say that the converse is true? Namely, we would like you to also show that mu star of A is equal to 1 implies x 0 is belongs to A, but that will be uh, you will uh, you'll need the condition that if x 0 belongs to A, because x 0 the singleton x 0 may not be in the algebra. So, that makes a difference. So, uh, check uh, uh, look at this exercise and try to prove the facts as for uh, that will help you to understand what is an outer measure, how does the outer measure of a set change with given conditions. Let us look at now uh, the problem, you are given a measure mu on an algebra A of subsets of a set x, you have defined the outer measure which in general is countable is sub additive. So, how to pick up sets, how to pick up those subsets of x such that mu star restricted to them will become countably additive as happened in the previous example that we discussed. So, for that, that is what is called the concept of a measurable set, a subset E of x. So, uh, mu is fixed, mu on the algebra is fixed, mu star is defined via that measure mu. So, mu is fixed. So, we are saying that a set E is mu star measurable, mu star is the outer measure induced by that measure is called measurable if for every y in x mu star of y can be written as mu star of y intersection E plus mu star of y intersection E complement. So, be careful uh, this says we are saying E is measurable. So, E measurable means take the set E right, which you want to test whether it is measurable or not. So, divide any set y into two parts y intersection E and y intersection E complement. Then measure of the two pieces should add up to give you the measure the size of uh, mu star of y. Okay. So, this is a picture here that you have got this is my set E. Okay. I want to check whether it is measurable or not. So, take this E. So, take any set y. So, this is my y. So, that gives me this piece which is y intersection E okay? and this is the part this is the part that is y intersection E complement. So, the requirement is we are saying that E is measurable if using E y is the set cut it into two parts y intersection E and y intersection E complement. So, there are two disjoint pieces of y and we want you should have mu star of y is equal to mu star of y intersection E plus mu star of the other part. Okay. That should happen every for, for every y, it should happen for every y that is important. So, that is called this uh, we say that E is measurable if for any subset y 
divide y into two parts y intersection e and y intersection e complement we want measure of outer measure of y should be the sum of these two outer measures so that is when we say a set e is measurable so let us look at uh, some uh, so let us will denote by s star the collection of all mu star measurable subsets so whenever a set e satisfies this condition we say that is measurable and let us put all the measurable sets in a collection and call that as s upper star so s upper star is the collection of all mu star measurable subsets of x here is one observation that a set is measurable if and only if mu star of y we want definition says it should be equal to the sum of the pieces but it is enough to say that mu star of y is bigger than or equal to mu star of y intersection e plus mu star of y intersection e complement that is because for every set y y is equal to y intersection e plus a union y intersection e complement and mu star is always sub additive so that means mu star of y is always less than or equal to mu star of y intersection e plus mu star so the inequality less than or equal to is always true because mu is monotone so to verify whether a set is measurable or not one has to check only that mu star of y should be bigger than or equal to mu star of y intersection e plus mu star of y intersection e complement for every set y so only bigger than or equal to has to be checked and uh, so we have to check only bigger than or equal to and in case mu star of a set is infinity then this inequality is obvious so that means one has to check this inequality only for sets for which mu star of y is finite so that gives us a very uh, a simplification saying that a set e is measurable if and only if for every subset y of x with the property that mu of mu star of y is finite one has to verify that mu star of y is bigger than or equal to mu star of y intersection e plus mu star of y intersection e complement for every subset y with mu star of y finite so this is the condition we are going to use again and again to prove whether a set or check whether a set e is mu star measurable or not so we are going to now understand the properties of this class s star okay what are the properties of this collection of measurable sets so the first observation is that every set in the given algebra is or is measurable that means if a belongs to the algebra a then this condition is always going to be true so let us verify that so let us uh, show that if a belongs to the algebra then a is measurable and that is for every y a subset of x with uh, mu star of y finite we should have mu star of y is bigger than or equal to mu star of y intersection e uh, y intersection a sorry uh, the set is a so y intersection a plus mu star of y intersection a complement so this is uh, what we have to show so let us look at the proof of this now we are going to use the fact that mu star of y is finite and mu star of y finite means that it is a infimum of some quantities so that crucial definition what is definition of infimum we are going to use so let epsilon greater than 0 be fixed then by definition of infimum there exists a covering so there exists sets ai belonging to a with the fact that the set y is covered by union of ais i equal to 1 to infinity and and mu star of y 
which is infimum plus a small number does not remain the infimum. So, it is bigger than or equal to nu of a i, i equal to 1 to infinity. Right? So, here we are using the fact that mu star of y is infimum and that is a finite quantity. Now, a i is are in the algebra, a is in the algebra. So, I can write this as this is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mu of union of uh, uh, union of uh, a i's intersection e uh, intersection a sorry uh, the set is a 1 to infinity union of the sets uh, union i equal to 1 to infinity a i intersection a complement. So, what I am saying is uh, sorry not the union this is wrong. So, let me let me just simply write it as. So, let us uh, observe what we are saying we are saying because of this each set a i. So, let us note let us note a i I can write as a i intersection a union a i intersection a complement and these are two disjoint sets and mu is a measure all the a i is a everything is in the algebra. So, using the fact that mu is a measure I can write it as so implies that mu of a i is equal to mu of a i intersection a plus mu of a i intersection a complement. Right? So, now mu of a i intersection a complement. So, that means summation mu of a i i equal to 1 to infinity is equal to summation i equal to 1 to infinity mu of a i intersection a plus summation i equal to 1 to infinity mu of a i intersection a complement. And now, let us note that the set a intersection uh, y is covered by union of a i intersection a i equal to 1 to infinity, because y is covered by union of a i's. So, a intersection y is covered by this and a complement intersection y is covered by union of i equal to 1 to infinity a i intersection a complement and these are sets in the algebra, because a belongs to the algebra that is a crucial thing. So, this will imply that mu star of a intersection y is less than or equal to summation of mu a i intersection a complement i equal to 1 to infinity and mu star of the second one gives me a complement intersection y is also a sub uh, is less than or equal to using this summation i equal to 1 to infinity mu of a i intersection a complement. Right. So, look at this equation, look at this equation, look at this equation. So, mu star of summation mu star of a i is bigger than this sum and that sum is bigger than or equal to mu star of a intersection y and this sum is bigger than or equal to mu star of a intersection y, uh, y a complement intersection y and we had mu star of y plus epsilon was bigger than this summation. So, that summation. So, putting these three equations together. So, if we call that earlier equation as 1, call this equation as 2, call this equation as 3 and call this equation as 4, then putting all these four equations together, what we have is the following that mu star of y plus epsilon, which was bigger than or equal to summation mu star of a i i equal to 1 to infinity that is that is equal to actually summation of mu star of a i intersection uh, a i equal to 1 to infinity plus 1 to infinity mu star of 
a i intersection a complement and that is bigger than or equal to mu star of y intersection uh, a plus mu star of y intersection a complement. And now, epsilon is arbitrary. So, let epsilon go to 0. So, this inequality will be still maintained will imply that mu star of y is bigger than or equal to mu star of y intersection a plus mu star of y intersection a complement and that will imply that a belongs to s star that is a is a measurable set. So, that is so hence we have proved that the algebra a is included in the collection s star that is what we wanted to prove. So, this is the uh, proof of the fact that the algebra a is contained in s star every element of uh, a is measurable. The next property that the class of measurable sets is closed under complementation namely if E is measurable then E complement is also measurable. That is obvious because in this criteria if you want to check if E is measurable then this is what we required and to check E complement is measurable the same thing is required because this will become E complement and E complement of complement is E. So, it is the same criteria same equation to be verified. So, obviously, because the definition has inbuilt E and E complement symmetric with respect to E and E complement that says the set E is a set E is measurable if and only if its complement is measurable or the collection a star of measurable sets is closed under complements. Next we want to check the property. So, the collection of all measurable sets one uh, it includes the class of all subsets in the original uh, algebra A and we want to check now that it is an algebra of subsets of x that means and mu star restricted to s star is finitely additive. So, two things we want to check one s star is an algebra and mu star restricted to s star is finitely additive. So, let us see what we have to check for this. So, first of all we want to check that s star is an algebra. We have already shown A is inside S star. So, that implies implying the empty set and the whole space that belong to A and hence A is in S star. So, empty set and the whole space belong to it. We just now observed that E belonging to S star implies E complement belongs to S star. So, if E is measurable E complement is measurable that also we have checked. So, let us check, uh, check the third property namely if E 1 and E 2 belong to S star we want to check this implies E 1 union E 2 also belongs to S star that means union of measurable sets is again measurable. So, this is what we want to check. So, let us look at a proof of this to so, to check that E 1 E 2 is measurable we have to check to check for every y contained in x mu star of y finite we have to check that mu star of y can be written as mu star of y intersection the set that is E 1 union E 2 plus mu star of y intersection E 1 union E 2 complement. So, this is this is the property that we have to check. So, what we will do is we will compute each one of the term and show it is equal to mu star of y. So, for that we start. So, note E 1 is measurable. So, that implies that mu star of y we can write it as mu star implies for every y mu star of y is mu star of y intersection E 1 plus mu star of y intersection E 2. And now, this is important that this happens for every y. 
So, I can change y according to my requirements. Okay. So, what I want to do is I will change this y to y intersection E 1. See, I want to compute y intersection E 1 union E 2. So, let us change it this y to that. So, that implies that mu star of y intersection E 1 union E 2 is equal to here I should replace y by y intersection. So, mu star of y intersection E 1 intersection E 1 union E 2, but E is a subset of E 1 union E 2. So, that is just y intersection E 1. Is that clear? Because if I replace y by y intersection E 1 union E 2, then this intersection with y 1 now with E 1 is just uh, y intersection E 1 plus what is the second thing let us write. So, mu star of uh, sorry uh, this one is E 1 complement I am sorry we made a mistake saying it is measurable mu star of y is mu star of y intersection E 1 plus mu star of y intersection E 1 complement. And now, when we replace y by y intersection E 1 union E 2. So, this is same as this plus the second term is y intersection E 1 union E 2 intersection E 1 complement. Right? So, let us simplify that. So, what we have gotten is the following what we have gotten is the following that mu star of y intersection E 1 union E 2 that was the left hand side is equal to mu star of y intersection E 1 plus what is this? Now, E 1 union E 2 intersection E 1 complement. So, when I take E 1, E 1 complement that is going to be empty set. So, this set is nothing but mu star of y intersection E 2 intersection E 1 complement. Right? So, we have computed mu of y intersection E 1 union E 2 to be equal to this. And now, I also want to compute what is mu star of y intersection complement of this. So, what is the complement of this E 1 union E 2 complement. So, what is that going to be? That is going to be mu star of y intersection by using um, our proper De Morgan laws for set theory. This is E 1 complement intersection E 2 complement. So, I want to compute mu star of E 1 complement intersection E 2 complement. How can we compute that? Recall saying that E 1 was measurable, we had that. So, if I replace y by y intersection E 2 complement, then I will get the required set here. So, use this equation. So, since E 1 is measurable, we have mu star of y. So, we will just keep it here to follow. So, mu star of uh, y intersection I want instead of this we want y intersection E 2 complement. So, let us look at y intersection E 2 complement is equal to mu star of y intersection E 1 intersection E 2 complement plus mu star of what will be this set? y intersection E 2 complement intersection E 1 complement. right? So, that is what we will have. Okay. So, this is what I wanted. Now, let us observe in this equation all the numbers are real numbers because of the assumption that mu star of y is finite. So, this is a subset. So, this is finite, this is finite, this is finite, all are finite numbers. So, I can interchange them, I can take one term on the other side if required. So, let us do that. So, from here we compute. So, implies mu star of y intersection E 1 complement, uh, E 1 complement intersection E 2 complement. This set is equal to mu star of y intersection E 2 complement minus take it on the other side it is mu star of y intersection E 1 intersection E 2 complement. Okay. So, we have gotten 
the required uh, quantities. Okay. So, we wanted mu star of we wanted what is mu star of y intersection e 1 union e 2. So, that is lying here. and we wanted that is lying here the second term. So, let us add these two terms. So, adding so add call it as this equation as 1 call this equation as 2 add 1 and 2 and that will give you that mu star of y intersection e 1 union e 2 plus mu star of y intersection e 1 complement intersection e 2 complement. So, this is equal to there we have got y star y star uh, sorry mu star of y intersection e 1 plus mu star of y intersection e 2 intersection e 1 complement plus y uh, mu star of y intersection e 2 complement minus mu star of y intersection e 1 intersection e 2 complement. Okay. So, this is what we have gotten and we want to check that this should come out to be equal to mu star of y. Okay. Now, let us uh, again try to use. So, this is mu of intersection E 2 complement here and that is E 1 intersection E 2 complement. Okay. Now, uh, let us observe uh, till now we have not used anywhere the fact that E 2 is measurable. Okay. So, let us try to use that fact that E 2 is also uh, measurable and so that we can uh, simplify this quantity. So, now observe E 2 measurable implies um, the following fact. We want to simplify this. So, let us look at um, what is going to be uh, E 2 y intersection E 2 and y intersection E 2 uh, complement. Right? So, let us try to E 2 measurable means uh, so for every y we have got mu star of y is equal to mu star of y intersection E 2 plus mu star of y intersection E 2 complement right? because of measurability. Now, I want to use this to compute uh, one of the terms here. So, let us replace y by y intersection E 2. So, that implies I can replace this by mu star of y intersection E E 2 will be equal to uh, that will not give us anything. Let us replace this by y intersection E 1. So, implies mu star of y intersection E 1 is equal to mu star of y intersection E 1 intersection E 2 plus mu star of y intersection E 1 intersection E 2 complement. Okay. So, what is uh, mu star of y intersection E 1 intersection E 2 complement that term is here. Okay. So, that we want with a negative sign. So, if we take it on the other side, so that means minus mu star of y intersection E 1 intersection E 2 complement is equal to I bring it on the other side. So, that is minus mu star of y intersection E 1 plus mu star of this term which is y intersection E 1 intersection E 2. Okay. And now, this so this is what we have reached here. So, this is the value that I was looking for. So, let us put in this value. So, this required quantity I will just take it here is equal to. So, this required quantity is equal to mu star of y okay, 
and here is minus mu star of y. So, those two terms will cancel out. Okay. So, let me just write that is mu star of y intersection E 1 plus mu star of y intersection E 2 intersection E 1 complement that we already had. So, plus mu star of y intersection E 2 complement and minus. So, that is equal to minus mu star of from here y intersection E plus mu star of y intersection E 1 intersection E 2. And now, these two terms cancel out. Okay. So, what we are left with is, so this is equal to mu star of y intersection E 2 intersection E 1 complement and y intersection E 2 intersection E 1. So, look at these two terms. So, these two terms it is y intersection E 2 intersection E 1 complement plus y uh, mu star of y intersection E 1 and E 2. Okay. So, that means, so these two terms are nothing but mu star of y intersection E 2. So, and one term is here. So, this is mu star of y intersection E 2 plus what I am saying is that this plus this term is nothing but mu star of y. So, this is complement mu star of y intersection E 2. Is that clear? This term as it is. Now, look at the fact that E 1 is measurable. So, mu star of y intersection E 2 is mu star of y intersection E 2 intersection E 1 complement plus mu star of y intersection E 1 intersection E 2. And now, once again using the fact that E 2 is measurable that is equal to mu star of y. So, we have proved the required uh, um, condition that mu star of y is equal to mu star of y. So, we have proved that this is mu star of y is equal to mu star of y intersection E 1 union E 2 plus mu star of y intersection E 1 complement intersection E 2 complement. So, that means, we have proved the fact that S is an algebra of subsets of the set X. So, what we have shown is E 1 E 2 belonging to S star imply E 1 uh, union E 2 also belong to S star. Here, uh, let me just comment that this proof looks uh, uh, a bit uh, um, technical, uh, uh, but it is not so difficult. E 1 measurable gives you one condition that mu star of y is equal to something. Okay. E 2 measurable gives you mu star of y is equal to something. Now, these sets y are arbitrary when you are given E 1 and E 2 are measurable means mu star of y is equal to mu star of y intersection E 1 plus mu star of y intersection E 2 E 1 complement. So, you can change this y to y intersection E 1, y intersection E 2 and so on. So, write down the three equations, what are equations which are given, write down the equation, uh, the equality that we proved and just manipulate, this is only a simple algebra which is required. So, today what we have done is, we have looked at, we have defined the concept of what is called a measurable set for a outer measure mu and we have shown that the original elements of the algebra are, are already measurable sets and the class of all measurable sets form an algebra. So, we will continue the analysis of uh, this class S star in the, our next lecture. Thank you.